Blessed is our God now and always and forever and ever. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. All glory, honor, and worship are your due, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Hello dear brothers and sisters. Today I want to talk about something very essential to the life of the church. In the early church, as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ sent his disciples to the world, he commanded them to go and preach the gospel of the good news. The purpose of the, doing that is so that through his gospel, through the good news, through the word of God, the world will be sanctified. And we know that certainly because the gospel changed lives of people, pagans, corrupt societies, transformed into better ones. And today even, as we do serve sacraments in the church, the whole point of the sacraments in the Orthodox Church is to sanctify the world, to save the world, to make the world a holier place. And that's why in the Orthodox Church we bless everything. We bless water, we bless oil, we bless the bread and wine, we bless homes, we bless crosses, we bless tools, we bless cars, we bless flowers, we bless persons, people. In a sense, we bless the world, we bless pets. The one nuance in that is that everything else, after being blessed, becomes holy. Even the most material things surrounding us accept and experience holiness and become holy and project holiness, except humans. Humans have to willingly participate in the process of the sanctification. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said to his disciples, go to those villages and bless them. As they accept your blessings, it will rest upon them. If they do not, it will return to you. And then he said, shake off your sandals, your shoes, shake the dust of that village off your shoes and depart. In other words, that it is through human acceptance of the blessings that the blessings rest also upon the surroundings and you don't want any part of anything that is unblessed in this case he warns them from the dust that they shouldn't even carry the dust of that particular village with them the dust of course has other meanings because it's kind of a sign of deadness that there is no water water gives life to, to the dirt but if it's waterless it's lifeless so the blessings did not rest therefore everything is dust and that is also connected to the fact that after living a meaningless life on this planet we become dust and ashes there is nothing else left off of us so when we do not receive the blessings of the lord then those blessings do not sanctify us as human beings but they sanctify everything else if the priest blesses someone's cross now that is blessed cross the water is blessed and becomes a holy water the oil is blessed becomes either a chrism or a holy unction oil and uh, other things as well, houses, cars, pets. And what blessing is, is really to bring the attention of God upon those particular things. When we are asking God's attention to a material thing, for example, a cross or water, God does desire the sanctification of that particular material thing and pays attention to it and in the gaze in the communion with god in touch with god that particular thing becomes holy what is holiness in its essence it is communion with god the opposite of that is sin which is separation from god and in the new testament we see many times when our Lord and Savior makes either an eye contact, a conversation, or physical touch, heals the persons who come 
in response to that. But also, we see humans such as Nicodemus that out of fear of the world do not come in contact with the Lord in an obvious way. Later on, we see Nicodemus even secretly defending the disciples of Christ or in a tricky way not to jeopardize his gains in this world or his reputation in this world. He jeopardizes the truth. He is considered the secret disciple of Christ that came to him at night. That's better than being a Pharisee and not following Christ at all or refusing to receive his blessings. But we have many other examples where people, despite of the threat of damaging their reputation or the physical threat upon their life, came to Christ, became his disciples. For example, we see the lepers come into meeting Christ, sacrificing their safety, because if they were caught in society, they would be simply uh, killed or thrown out or uh, punished, but they come to Christ. And since we're talking the example of the lepers, we see there were two levels of blessing in the story of the 10 persons with leprosy coming to Christ. As they come for the healing, the Lord sends them off telling them go and show yourselves to the priests on the way they find cleansing so that was the first level of the blessing coming from the lord and only one of them returns to the lord he is a repeat visitor he does not take the blessing and run away with it but he returns to the lord to thank him and worship him as he kneels down in front of him. And the Lord says to him, your faith has made you well. Where are the other nine? So we can see that in human life, it is not that simple to receive the blessings unless we fully commit ourselves and one another to our Lord and God, Savior, Jesus Christ. That is what the liturgical phrase from the end of every petition is, let us commend ourselves and our whole life to Christ our God. Our whole life. Don't take the blessing and run away, which is only crumbs, but bring entire your life to his feet, like this leper did. So, what happens, however, those of us who take the crumbs of blessings and run away, eventually we waste all those blessings and we become subject to the world. So the world re-transforms us because through the blessings of God, as recipients of the blessings of God, we're supposed to transform our lives. It may be a slow process because our will constantly contradicts the will of God. That's why in the Lord's Prayer we say, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is a desire, a human desire. It is a desire of God through His only begotten Son, communicated to us that it is His will that needs to be fulfilled on earth as it is in heaven, so that the transformation of the world will occur. But because we constantly insist on our own will, then the will of God does not transform us forcefully, because we are created freely and we're created free and we're created as images of God and God will not distort that image by taking our freedom away from us. But in the result, we suffer the lack of transformation. And what happens, that has happened throughout the centuries, is that the world comes back and transforms the church. I am not talking about hopelessness because the church is led by the Holy Spirit. As the world enters into the church and transforms it in its own image and we create communities in our own images and our likenesses, we ought to remember that we ought to rely on the guidance of the Holy Spirit 
so that we will allow God's will to be on earth as it is in heaven and through that will transform the world. We have seen throughout the centuries that as Christianity entered into societies, it transformed those societies. Paganism and secularism and communism, invasions of enemies came and distorted us. The perfect example for that of the world affecting the church is the crusaders that the church mimicked the world and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had told the first Pope of Rome, Saint Peter, put your sword in the shift because Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane was doing exactly that. He was trying to defend the Lord as a soldier in the world would defend his general. So he was bringing the world into the communion of the disciples acting in that way and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ reversed that and showed Peter and the rest of his disciples who were with him that in the kingdom of God the rules of this world don't function and what did he do he took the ear of the servant of the soldier and reattached to his head restored the damage and then told Peter to put the sword back because those who take a sword will fall from the sword. So that is what happens next. When the worldliness enters into the church, those of us who find it inappropriate often fight back to the worldliness through the principles of the world. Like St. Peter was trying to defend our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with the principles of the world. They came with swords and clubs as the Lord said to them, I was with you all the time in the temple and you did not arrest me there. But now you have come at me as if I was a criminal. But St. Peter in the same circumstances uses the worldly methods to withstand, to fight against the worldly things that were attacking our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he gives them a different kind of example. He had told them already earlier on that the rules of this world should not be their principles, that the rulers of this world take advantage of those who are under them, they use them and then they discard them, as we can see in today's world, how the rulers of this world, politicians and others, uh, simply use everybody that they can, uh, manipulate everybody's life to their benefit, and then when they don't need them or they don't need them as much, they discard them as if they were disposable. And that we submit ourselves to. Just for a quick fun ride with a powerful so-called person, we enter into their closed circle and then shortly after we're discarded and we don't really get a point, learn a lesson. Sometimes we think, oh, those who were discarded before us, they were stupid or foolish. Uh, that's why they did not deserve to be in the circle of this person. But I, great ego, will be good friends with this person and he will or she will respect me and love me and I will be uh, the greatest of all greatest. But to a manipulative person, to the worldly person, to the world, everybody is disposable, everybody is uh, used and discarded. And that should be an example for us. There is only one person who came into this world and died for us. And those who follow that person's example, they also sacrificed their life for the well-being of the rest of humanity and for the sanctification of this world. But what happens is that the leaders of this world, the rulers of this world, as our Lord and Savior Jesus called them, become our role models. There was a time when celebrities were the model of our children, the models of our youth and young people and even adults. And that was considered at one point inappropriate because some of them behaved inappropriately and with the good that they presented to this world, whatever their celebrity was about, they also presented their evil lifestyles and bad lifestyles and that became also 
uh, mimicking points for our uh, children and our young people. But today it's even worse <clears throat> when the politicians have become the celebrities and instead of the church offering them transformation, the churches become transformed in the image of the world. We mimic the world. Hopefully, we are embracing the world, and as we embrace the world through, hopefully, our holiness, we, in that embrace, will also transform the world. What is the hope, though? The hope is that we believe, we trust, that the church is led by the Holy Spirit. And although, for example, communism came and wiped out large, vast amounts of uh, Christians and destroyed uh, thousands of churches in almost half of the world, today secularism is doing the same thing. And as we are not brave enough to stand up to the world and reaffirm our way of holiness, our way of following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, showing the world that Christ is the way and He is the life and that's what we are to imitate, we often out of fear and intimidation follow the ways of the world. And that also transmits into the community lives of the Christian churches where Unfortunately, Christians become influenced by the world and the world models that seemingly are successful becomes our principles. Instead of putting our swords in uh, shifts, instead of turning the other cheek, instead of loving our neighbor and our enemies, instead of preaching the good news to everyone, we do the exact opposite. We mimic the world. We fight against each other. We do not believe it's possible to love the enemies. We do not even practice loving our neighbors the way that we love ourselves. In fact, we don't even know how to love ourselves. We don't even know what true love looks like and how would it be practiced, should it be practiced in the lives of Christians and in the lives of the people in the world. We do not give a great example of love to the world so that through that love the world would be transformed into a better place for our next generations. We as Christians in a sense have failed our new generations. Three, four generations of Christians have not practiced their faith the way our Lord commanded us. And the new generation today has inherited a planet that is worse than it used to be a few generations ago. Instead of sanctifying the world, transforming the world into a better place, into a better society, by mimicking the world and the worldliness, we have agreed that there is a natural course to everything. We have agreed with the rule of the jungle, everyone to their own devices. And therefore, we are suffering today, but there is always a hope. The Holy Spirit continues to guide the church and the Holy Spirit will bring us to a better place if as I said, we use our free will and we embrace the will of God and we receive the blessings of the Lord that He's bestowing on us so that at one point He is not going to dust off His shoes and leave us to our own devices. There is no time, dear brothers and sisters. Our life is short. Let us constantly remember that it is the will of God that is to be embraced the way it is embraced in heaven and that it is like that first leper or tenth leper we are to return to him and glorify him 
for the cleansing of sins and the cleansing of sores and cleansing of diseases that he bestowed on us through his holiness and through his love for humankind now and forever into the ages of ages amen thank you and god bless you